Chapter 6 is where we go from intersection testing to actual lighting calculations using the Fong model. The chapter starts off with the need to calculate the normal, a direction perpendicular to the surface of the sphere, given a point on the surface. At first, this appears trivial, just requiring subtracting the surface point from the center of the sphere. However, once transformations of the sphere are involved, the normal will become misaligned with the surface. The point on the sphere needs to be converted from world coordinates, which is what our ray hits will return, to local coordinates. The normal is then calculated in local space and then brought back into world space by multiplying by the transpose of the inverse. But then we need to make sure that there are no weird values in our W coordinate by setting it equal to zero. I get a nan, or not a number value, because I was taking the square root of a negative number. I move the negative sign out, and things work just fine. With normal testing complete, next is determining the reflection vector given the normal and an incoming vector. I add a static reflection method to my vector class, since this is probably going to be something I'll need in later calculations, once rays start bouncing all over the place. The reflection vector is used when calculating the specular reflection off the surface, meant to simulate the highlight you see on shiny objects. We need two additional classes before we can make any calculations, a lighting class and a material class. The light class for now is just a point light, which requires a location and an intensity. The material class holds the object's color, ambient, diffuse, specular, and shininess factors. The different terms are restricted to be greater than or equal to zero, and usually in the range of one, except for shininess, which can go from 10 to 200. The weird values are because the shininess is actually the power the specular calculation is raised by. Yes, I spell shininess wrong, I'll fix that later. I decided that all ray objects will contain a reference to a material for performing lighting calculations. The ray object material test is just to make sure materials are set up correctly, and I am able to change their values.
Next is the lighting test, which uses the Fong lighting model based on summing the ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting calculations. This was a very popular model in early computer graphics that used the fixed functionality pipeline, which can still be seen in many mobile games today. There are four different possible light tests the book has you perform, where you look either straight on at the light, or the surface, or at glancing angles. The lighting calculations are broken down into each of the three components, and the specular term can be set to zero if we have no diffuse component. The blend model could also be used just with a half vector, which is easier to calculate than the reflection. Implementation of the Fong lighting model moves along just fine. I've actually done this several times before when I used to write OpenGL shaders many years ago. I initially don't get the correct values because I didn't set up my default material properties the same way the book recommends. I personally don't like to have an ambient above zero when I'm first starting out. With the lighting math complete, now it's time to copy all of Chapter 5's challenge assignment and add light calculations so that the sphere is not just showing where a hit occurs, but also the calculated lighting on that point of the surface. I forget to remove the transforms for shear and rotate for the first test, but things look promising. The sphere appears to be rendered perfectly. I adjust the ambient term to match what the book has, and up the resolution to 512 pixels to see this sphere in all of its glory. Well that's it for chapter 6, which went much faster than I expected. It looks like chapter 7 is going to have us clean up our code a bit and add some structure including an actual scene as well as a camera class. If you're following along at home, let me know how you're doing in the comments section below. Thanks everyone, see you next time.